World War I armor. Metal armor has always struggled to keep pace with advancements in gunpowder weapons. As guns became more effective, armor had to become increasingly thicker and heavier to provide any protection. Troops who had to haul their gear into battle often found armor more a logistic liability than any help. But effective World War I armor wasn't just fantasy. There are examples of how basic metal plates were successfully used in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The most famous example of metal bulletproof body armor before World War I was its use by the Kelly Gang in the 1880s. Four gang members wore iron suits of armor, six millimeters thick, weighing up to 44 kilograms or 97 pounds. The armor was worn in a shootout with police. The armor worked successfully, deflecting lower power bullets of the time. But it was ultimately self-defeating. It made movement difficult, greatly impeded sight, and had exposed areas. The Ned Kelly gang did not escape or win their shootout, though they did extend its duration. When World War I broke out in 1914, armor was not worn by infantry, and what helmets and hats were worn were not specifically designed to protect against shrapnel. As the war developed into static trench warfare, it was noticed head injuries became common as men were exposed to shell blasts above them, which would rain shrapnel down onto their heads. The French were the first to standardize a steel helmet to protect against shrapnel, followed by the British and Germans. By mid-1916, most armies had a steel helmet. Interestingly, there were some initial doubts about the effectiveness of helmets due to an increased reporting of injuries. However, it was discovered more injuries were being reported as more men were living to report them. There was no doubt helmets saved lives from shrapnel, but they did not protect a soldier from direct rifle or machine gun fire or protect the body from shrapnel. Casualties continued to soar during World War I, so most nations invested in more advanced armor designs to try and keep their men alive. There's nothing you can do. One of the most interesting examples of World War I armor is the American Brewster body shield. This is shown in the Italian movie Many Wars Ago. This scene represents an historic attempt by Italian soldiers to break an Austrian line. The men were cut down by machine gun fire as they lumbered towards the enemy, and the scene represents well the reality of any such armored attack. Though this scene uses American World War I armor, the Italians did have their own versions during the war. Italian armor is represented in the video game Battlefield I. Suits like these would be issued to Italian shock troops responsible for clearing paths to the enemy or rushing enemy trenches. These troops would be more typically carrying light weapons like pistols, hand grenades, or knives, or simply just tools for clearing barbed wire. There were countless armor designs during the war. Most were not used. One popular design was Germany's interlinked panel armor. This is often referred to as lobster armor. 500,000 sets of this armor were produced and issued to men on the Western Front. The armor weighed between 9 and 11 kilograms, but like most helmets, this armor was not designed to reliably stop high-velocity bullets. Rather, it provided protection against shrapnel. This armor, like most of its kind, was issued to men in static positions, such as machine gun operators, sentries, or even snipers. Helmets for static troops could further be up-armored by attaching plates, which did provide some protection from direct fire if worn laying prone or firing from a trench. Ultimately charging an enemy trench wearing heavy armor provided more risk than reward. Large suits of heavy armor were not popular with troops. Armor impeded use of weapons, climbing, crawling, jumping. No man's land was frequently a mess of mud and barbed wire. Keeping your balance was more important than armor. Furthermore, steel armor did little to protect against the concussive effects of grenades or shells. Despite significant research and development in personal armor, the most successful advancement in armor during World War I would be its marriage to the tractor with the development of tanks, which saw combat in the second half of the war. Willie, what you want, he'll do the rest. 